Hi, my name is Miro Inev, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect at NVIDIA focusing on deep learning. Today I'll walk you through a toy demonstration of deep learning training uh, which will help us predict our commute time as well as visualize the network as it trains on this problem. So to start with, uh, we'll set up the problem in the following way. Essentially, we'll pretend that we can uh, set the relationship between the variables of the time of day that someone leaves their house and the weather conditions and from those two variables we'll be able to determine the relationship between them and the amount of time that it takes someone to get to work. So if we have these two variables, time of day and weather condition, they're related to the commute duration in this way. So for time of day, if you leave early in the morning, it doesn't take long. During morning rush hour, it's not a good time to be on the road. At lunchtime, it's, uh, it's a good time to commute. As everyone's coming home, again, the traffic becomes bad. And then in the late evening, it's a good time to be on the road. The weather severity uh, and its impact on commute duration has this shape. So essentially an exponential function as the weather gets worse, you're stuck in traffic longer. If we combine these two variables together, we get this three-dimensional surface such that any particular time of day and any severity of weather combination can be combined and they'll give us a point from the surface which determines the commute duration. So in this example, we'll start out by essentially pretending to be the traffic gods and determining these relationships, specifically specifying that it's these two functions and the linear combination through addition is what determines commute duration. And then we'll go through and we'll take the role of data scientists. So as data scientists, we don't actually have access to this underlying distribution. So instead, what we have to do is collect data and from it try to build models. In this case, what we'll do is we'll pretend that we have a logbook of journal entries where each entry contains a departure time and the weather conditions as well as the associated duration for the commute. So imagine we've got you know thousands of these entries in our journal. What we'll do is we'll pretend that there are these little red dots here that are overimposed on the underlying function. And since, again, as, we, as a reminder, we don't actually have access to the underlying blue distribution, but we do have access to these red dots, which are just our, our journal observations and our entries. You might notice they don't fall exactly onto the surface. There's a little bit of noise associated with them because we often have you know, instruments that aren't precise, whether they're telling time or weather conditions. So from these red dots, we'll try to learn this blue function. And specifically, the way we do this is we take our logbook of entries and we split them up into uh, a training set and a testing set. And the training set is usually something like 75% of the data and the testing set is usually something like 25% of the data. And given the training set, what we like to do is build a model which can take our inputs, in this case the uh, time of departure and the weather conditions, and from them predict the commute duration. So from our training uh, data set, we have the capacity to use a learning algorithm, something like backpropagation in the case of neural networks, to help us figure out what this mapping is from these inputs to these outputs. And then once we've trained our model, we evaluate how well it's doing by showing it data that it hasn't seen in training, essentially the testing set, and asking it whether its results match with the known hidden outcomes that we put in our back pocket when the network was training. So this is essentially the process that we'll go through and we'll be using a neural network model. Uh, along the way, uh, there will be a chance for us to look at how this network's predictions are evolving over time. <clears throat> and specifically, um, those predictions will be plotted at uh, intervals using these purple dots that you're seeing here. So uh, just as a reminder, the blue surface is what the traffic gods have determined that the relationship is between our two independent variables, the time of departure and the weather conditions. The red dots represent our journal entries, and in this case, the purple dots here represent the predictions of the neural network. So when the neural network is initialized before any training, before it's had a chance to see any data, its weights are random and it's got this prediction that clearly does not map very well from our inputs to our outputs. As it has a chance to see more examples, it starts to actually capture the relationship between the weather conditions and the commute duration quite well, but it hasn't learn the surface of these uh, humps in the relationship between the time of day and the uh, com commute duration. As it has a chance to see more and more passes of this data, the weights are tuned using our learning algorithm uh, and they make fewer and fewer mistakes so that when we're done training, uh, we end up having a 
prediction from our ne neural network, which is shown in purple here, which overlaps very well with the target function that we sought out to model. So at this point, uh, let's actually go ahead and mathematically generate our data. So this is what that looks like. here. So just as a reminder, time of day is related to commute duration in this way, weather severity is related to commute duration in, in this way. So um, when we combine these together, we get this three-dimensional surface. Now, uh, as you'll recall, we don't actually have access to the surface, but we'll be using it as a proxy to help us generate the, the data set. And our data set is going to be 5,000 logbook entries, like we discussed earlier, where they're just composed of the time of day that we left and the weather conditions. And we can plot our um, generated data onto the underlying distribution. And what you'll see is these red dots, which again represent the entries in our logbook. Uh, and they map fairly well onto this underlying surface. But again, there's a bit of noise, uh, which is fairly realistic. So we'll now go ahead and define our neural network model that's going to try and learn this relationship. Um, specifically, it's going to have two inputs, which are the, um, in this case, the time of departure and the weather conditions and it's going to have a single output which is just the commute duration and in between we've just defined uh, layers of neurons that are fully connected to everything below them and let's go ahead and do that now so if we were to visualize what this neural network structure looks like it has the shape um, you see here and again, just a re reminder, this is this is where our inputs are coming in. So one of these neurons represents the time of day that we leave. Another one represents the severity of the weather. Those neurons are connected to five neurons above them, uh, connected to 27 neurons above them, 20 above those guys, 40 above them, and then finally the final prediction that gets to be made, which is the uh, duration of the trip. So you know you might ask why this structure. Um, this is uh, something that's inspired by NVIDIA's latest headquarters. Uh, this is called Endeavor, uh, and this neural network by no means matches that building exactly, but it's uh, just something fun. And I encourage you to play around with this notebook, which is available on GitHub, and to delete layers here and change the structure of this network. Just as a demonstration, I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's make these guys have this shape, and um, the neural network of course changes itself accordingly. Um, let's go back to our Endeavor looking structure uh, and continue the, the process here. So let's plot that once again just for consistency. So now that we've got this network that we've defined, um, let's go ahead and start streaming data through it such that these little weights here which are initially randomly initialized can start to tune themselves so as to minimize the errors that are get made on the logbook entries. And the way they tune themselves is by essentially changing their influence for every sample to minimize the difference between the neural network prediction and that of what we have in our training data. Um, for, if you're interested in this algorithm, you know, there will be links in the video uh, following the video for you to read up. So let's go ahead and now start this process of training. And let's go ahead and visualize what that looks like. So if we go back to our plot here, you can see that the neural network um, this, the, the purple dots represent its predictions. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Um, so this is our target uh, surface that we're trying to learn, and the red dots represent uh, the data that we have access to to learn from. And in purple, we see the neural network predictions as they change over time, as we're getting more and more passes through this training data set that we have access to. Um, and you'll sort of see the neural network predictions start to take the shape of our target function uh, as they've had a chance to uh, apply this learning procedure. So we're starting to see some of the structure here. You can kind of tell that it's starting to capture the important relationships. It already seems like it's gotten the uh, relationship between the weather conditions quite well, and now it's just fine-tuning itself on the relationship between the time of day and the commute duration. So this process will terminate shortly. And this is essentially what's happening under the hood whenever you're developing uh, as a data scientist these experiments. You set up and define a neural network fabric or architecture, and you start streaming your data through it and allow it to uh, learn from what it's seeing. And here, we're essentially visualizing its predictions over time as a way to understand its predictions. So 
here we've concluded the training process um, and we can uh, zoom in and figure out exactly what, what it's doing. But let's, let's take a step back um, and let's look at the learning process in several different ways. So the, the first way we'll look at it is to plot how uh, the errors that we're making over time. So essentially this is a plot of the number, uh, the, the way in which our predictions differ from that of the target distribution. So we can see that initially we're making a lot of mistakes because we haven't seen any data. Uh, and on the x-axis, this is the number of passes that we've had a chance to make through the training data. And as we take more and more passes through the data, or as they're known as epochs, we see that the number of mistakes we're making starts to converge down to zero. So essentially, we've started to do quite well on this model. And we learned quite quickly, as you see initially, we jumped down very rapidly. So if we were to visualize what the neural network predicts <clears throat> before it's seen any data, it would look something like this, where in blue we've got the <clears throat> function we're trying to learn, the red dots are our proxy towards that function, the, the logbook entries we have, and in purple are the predictions of the neural network when we query it for combinations of time of day and uh, weather conditions. And as you can see, when we give it these combinations of inputs, its outputs or its predictions about commute durations are quite bad because it's just randomly initialized at this point. As it has a chance to see more data, we can query its predictions midway through the training process. So this is after it's had a chance to see, I think, 150 passes of the uh, training data. And here you'll notice that the uh, model is actually starting to get better. It's uh, doing quite well on understanding the relationship between the severity of the weather and the commute duration, but the relationship between the um, time of departure and the commute duration seems to have uh, a little bit of room to improve specifically in the afternoon hours. It seems like it's capturing the morning hours quite well. Um, and then as we get closer to uh, the training completion, essentially once the, the network has full, seen all the data multiple times, in this case 300 times, we'll notice that the network is now fully trained and its predictions are about as good as you get uh, in terms of wrapping themselves onto this underlying target distribution. And so with that, uh, we essentially conclude our uh, little demonstration. Let's just um, plot the final neural network after it's been trained. You'll notice it has the same shape, but if you were to investigate this more deeply, these weights are no longer randomly initialized, but now they are actually set uh, such that they can solve this problem very well. Uh, and with that, uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Take care.